Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Today, we have a wonderful show lined up for you. So don't go away. We'll have a lot more coming up on The Pulse. And now we're joined by Linda Foy and David Tuma of BG&E. So folks, winter month is here, cold weather, and uh, we want to talk to our viewing audience on how to be safe and secure during our, um, our winter months. So talk to me about some of the safety issues that are at hand. Certainly one of the most important things re relating to safety in the winter that you don't typically have to deal with in the summer um, is carbon monoxide. Okay. And, and there have been some cases of uh, carbon monoxide exposure, sure. and as a lot of people know, it's it's uh, the silent killer. Mm -hmm. It's odorless, it's uh, colorless, you, you don't necessarily know that you're, you're being exposed to it. Right. So the first thing we would recommend is that customers purchase, install, and make sure it's installed properly, okay. a carbon monoxide detector. Mm -hmm. And many of them now are combination carbon monoxide and smoke alarms. Right. That okay. one happens to be just for carbon monoxide. Okay. But it's really important, and I think David um, might know more specifically about where you should place them, the mm -hmm. ideal locations you should have them in your home. Mm -hmm. So David, tell me, where does carbon monoxide come from? Carbon monoxide comes from any burning appliance, mm -hmm. uh, whether you're burning gas, oil, uh, wood, pellet stoves, mm -hmm. or kerosene. So anything that's going to burn, it's going to have byproducts and, put, and produce carbon monoxide. And does it come from a faulty furnace or just uh, automatically there? Actually, if the products of combustion do not leave the building, mm -hmm. such as a chimney stoppage right. or something like that, the carbon fumes are going to come back in right. uh, and at that point uh, could cause harm or even death with that. So, so you, it's typically produced, right. but if it's venting properly, it'll go outside and you'll not be impacted by okay. it. But if there's a problem with the ventilation, then it's going to back up, as, as David said, and, and you're going to have problems. Okay. So while the carbon monoxide detector are, is important, it's also important to make sure that your, your appliances and, and your furnaces are also checked for uh, and we, we, leaks. We recommend, uh, particularly as it relates to, to furnaces, that customers have all appliances, but especially your heating source, your furnace, mm -hmm. um, checked at least annually, right before the right. start of, of the winter season, so that you know that everything is working properly and, and you want to change your filter regularly every 30 days. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things that, that the homeowner or the renter needs to do to sort of take responsibility. Um, if they're able to, if they're a renter, they may not have you know, access or they may right. not be able to get someone in, um, but, but work with your management company to see that they do that to ensure your safety. Okay. Talk to me about power outages. We had um, the, the hurricane a couple months ago. And we had the blizzard a couple of uh, winters ago, and we had power outages during those times. Talking about the difference in the summer and the winter. A couple things. Um, first off, BGE prepares uh, both for winter and for, for uh, summer outages. We have annual storm drills. Um, mm -hmm. We do a lot of different exercises to make sure that we're ready to respond when there are outages. We proactively call in uh, additional resources when we think we're going to need them. But we also ask that our customers uh, take some proact proactive action as well. Right. Uh, you want to have basic things in your house to, to ensure your, your family safety in, in the event that there is an extended power outage. Mm -hmm. Some of the things here that we recommend, obviously, a flashlight with um, with working batteries. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend candles. Candles can cause more problems than right. um, than we want to think about right, right. now. Um, a corded telephone, which uh, no one probably, few people probably have now. Right. We don't think a lot about them because we use uh, our cell phones, and we may even use a, a corded or a cordless phone at mm -hmm. home, but. If you're if you're in an extended power outage, you may not have the ability to charge your corded phone, your uh, cell phone. Your cordless phone uh, ultimately needs a power source, and right. so it may not work. Right. So it's always a good idea to have one of these on hand to know where it is mm -hmm. um, in the event that that you do have an extended so outage. So a lot of people think these are uh, antiques, you know, but they're really important. Yeah, when I bought that, it was so cheap, it was almost free because right. nobody buys them anymore. Right. So um, you know, just keep one on hand and, and make sure you know where it is. I, I keep one in my house um, where I can see it so that I don't forget where it is in, in the event that I need it. Okay, we got some other uh, things inside here. Uh, I see there's an alarm clock and 
And a, uh, a lot of these things, we, we depend so much on technology now. Our, right. our telephones, uh, you know, their, their phones, their cameras, their clocks, their, their radios, their, their all these things combined. But, but if you don't have the use of them, you're going to need to kind of go old school and, and use some of the stuff that maybe you haven't seen or even thought about in a while. All right, I got a can of tuna fish. You got a can of tuna fish, and you need a can opener. <laughs> right, exactly. Right, you may right, you so. may not think about that. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So, um, and get, this is just sort of a, a sample of some of the things we recommend on our website, bge.com. There's a lot of information about what customers need to need to have mm -hmm. um, ready at, at their homes um, sh should they experience a power outage. One of the other things people don't typically think about is that. Um, we recommend you keep your, your uh, gas tank full because the gas station nearby may be out of service if there's right. an extended outage. Particularly in the winter, uh, we have issues just getting to where the problems are. Uh, a couple of years ago when we had the back-to-back -back blizzards, we had snow that was covering a lot of our equipment. We couldn't even see the equipment. Um, once we were finally able to get down the street or get to wherever the work was. So um, you really have to plan for the safety of your family and recognize right. that everyone's power is not going to come back on right. within a matter of hours. It, it's going to take a while. Okay, you mentioned family. Let's talk about our children and safety with our children during events. We actually have, um, it's, it's called eSmart. There's, a, there's an online uh, website that we work with a vendor to provide that uh, to our customers. I believe mm -hmm. the, the actual web address is eSmartOnline slash BGE. And um, it's an actual tool that, that teachers are using now to teach their kids about um, energy safety. Simple things like, you know, don't touch a down wire, call BGE, and for, for a kid, tell an adult, and that adult should call BGE right away. Mm -hmm. Assume that the wire is live. Don't assume that it's a cable or telephone wire. It may right. be, but BGE needs to come out and make that determination. In terms of natural gas, we, t we tell kids that it smells like rotten eggs. If you smell something like that, mm -hmm. call BGE and we'll come out and respond. And you want to make sure you get out of the home um, in order to, to be safe until someone comes and addresses it. So, David, and other than the, uh, the winter concerns, what are some of the other safety issues and things dealing uh, with BGE? and Well, um, one thing is uh, call before you dig program, Miss Utility. We advertise uh, Miss Utility all the time, mm -hmm. and we now have a national number, which is 811. And we want you to call before you dig, whether you're planting trees or you're putting up a fence. Um, that way uh, we can come out and mark the gas lines, the electric lines, water lines can be marked. Uh, and that, that's really, really important because a lot of times you, you think, you know what, I'm just planting a tree, it's in my yard, it's not right. that big a deal. Right. You don't know what's underground. Exactly. And, and even if you're planting a, a little tree, as Dave said, um, you need to call. And, and it's real easy, 811 is now the national number and they'll, through that system, they'll know, you know the area that you're in, they'll get in touch with the appropriate utilities, come out and mark your, your the utilities, then you can safely dig. The, mm -hmm. the, the vast majority of, of, of uh, gas leaks and, and strikes that we have to our equipment mm -hmm. come from a contractor or someone other than BGE doing some type of work that impacts our facilities underground, which ultimately can lead to, to an outage, of whether it's gas right. or electric for our customers. Right. Now tell me about, you always see uh, when the weather's hot, um, or even cold weather, you, you see advertising on news media recommending that you check on those who are, uh, may not be able to help themselves. Mm -hmm. um, are there programs, are there special things out there to help people with uh, getting electric electricity taken mm -hmm. care of or, or fuel funds or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. There are a lot of programs out there. We strongly recommend that any customer, particularly el elderly customers, but even you know, families with young children, mm -hmm. anybody who is having difficulty paying their bill or, or who may think they, they may get into trouble, to contact us in advance. Don't wait until you get a turn off notice. Don't wait until your service is turned off because okay. then you're, you're, you're sort of going at it from the wrong, wrong end. Sure. You want to get those um, services in place before you get to that point so that service can be restored or and not interrupted at all. Okay. One of the things that we've done, and we've been working with the Fuel Fund actually uh, since the beginning, we actually provided the seed money nearly 30 years ago for the Fuel Fund, and, and one of the things that we do is we put in our January bills uh, an envelope, just a simple envelope that asks people to consider donating to mm -hmm. the Fuel Fund. We now have a new way of donating. You can also go online to make your donation if you don't want to do it this way. Okay. Um, the Fuel Fund is primarily for uh, customers who've exhausted all other means of, of energy assistance. Mm -hmm. So that's one option. 
we go out in the community and we do a lot of conservation workshops, uh, energy safety, and the conservation workshops, you may think, well, I need someone to help me pay my bills. Right. Conservation is not my issue. But it is, because if you're not conserving and not being as energy efficient as you could be, your bill's higher than it needs to be anyway. Right. So the whole goal is to get your bill down to where it's manageable. And there are a lot of things that customers can do to make their bills more manageable. And so we want to, to make sure customers are aware of that, but then also have services in place um, if they need them. One of the things that we recommend, and this is for anybody, um, is our budget billing program. Mm. I participate in budget billing. I like knowing that my bill is going to be roughly the same amount every month. It evens out your payments over 12 months so that you're not as impacted by those uh, extreme weather temperatures, either in extreme heat or extreme cold. So there are a lot of options out there. Okay. So David, is there anything that we haven't touched on about being safe and, and preparing your house and uh, just being prepared for, uh, hopefully we won't have another blizzard like we've had in the past or, uh, or even uh, the hurricanes or even the earthquake. Uh, but is there anything we haven't touched on that you think we should tell our viewing audience? A couple things that are important, and, and especially with the economy today, everybody's looking to save a few dollars. And you may hire someone in your home to do maybe some electrical work or maybe some gas work, uh, and they may not be licensed. Right. Uh, I would recommend that you get a licensed electrician to come in and do work in your home, mm -hmm. uh, as well as plumbing or any gas work. Make sure they are licensed. Uh, and the job's done, you know, correctly. Okay. And you talked about on the way over uh, the the importance of, of the G GFI um, checking for frayed wiring, and even with people that are maybe at mid January just taking down their Christmas decorations, mm -hmm. there's some things that people need to be looking for as it relates to electric safety. Absolutely, and uh, I know many people like to leave the lights up all year round. Uh, that's not advisable. Uh, they're not going to weather the extreme heat or the extreme cold. Okay. Uh, you should take your, your Christmas lights down each year, inspect them, uh, as Linda said, if there's frayed wiring, damaged uh, uh, sockets for lights, throw them away and, and buy new ones for, for the next season. Okay. And the other thing to point out along those lines, if you're going to be, whether you're, you're um, uh, putting up holiday lights or building a deck or whatever it is, there's a, a law, the, the High Voltage Line Act is, I believe, what it's called, and, and there's a requirement that uh, structures remain a minimum of 10 feet away from overhead power lines. So the first thing you need to do before you have a deck built, before you, you plant a tree, is, is to look up. And if you look up and you see overhead power lines, you need to be very careful about where you build your structure, if, okay. it's, a, if it's a shed, if it's a, a play area for your kids. Um, because many times we have cases where we go out, if there's a power outage, we go out and we, and we, you know, we want to do the work, but then we see, well, our power line is now, you know, five feet away from right. this playset. Right. It shouldn't be. It's it, that is unsafe. And and there's a law that says these structures need to remain ten feet away. So customers need to be mindful right. of that. Tell me uh, before before we go out, is there a, a website or a, a, any place we can go? The audience can go to to find out more about being safe. The vast majority of this information is on our website, which is bge.com. Mm -hmm. There is a an entire section devoted to safety. There's there's gas safety, there's electric safety, there's there's kids safety. It's broken down into to a number of areas, um, and and of course you can always go there. Um, we provide information in our uh, bill inserts. Our, our publication is called Connections, and every month in the bill there's there's helpful information there. And certainly anytime an, an organization uh, wants BGE to come out and do a, a safety seminar, conservation workshop, we're happy to do that. Reach okay. out to us, give us a call, and we can arrange that. Great. Well, folks, thanks for coming on the Pulse today and giving our uh, viewing audience a, a briefing on how to stay safe during the upcoming winter months and on into the spring and summertime. It's good to know that you're all outside here uh, working hard to keep the citizens of our city and our state safe uh, when the bad times come about. We, All right. We try. Thanks for coming. Thanks for on. having me. Thank right. you. Don't go away. We'll be back with more on the Pulse. Sometimes your nose makes you happy. Sometimes it gets in the way. But did you know that your very own nose could help you save the day? In your house, when you smell something awful, it could be natural gas. So, get on your toes. like fried and eggs. If you smell it, get out of the house fast. And tell an adult to call BGE. Get out, get out, get out of the house. Hello, 
and welcome to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Redd. Joining me now is Sergeant Michael Shakar of the Amtrak Police. Sergeant, welcome to the show. Thanks, sir. Okay, so tell me, uh, give me a background of the Amtrak Police Department. Okay, sir. The uh, Amtrak Police Department is relatively, it's very unique. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nationwide police department that partners with the uh, Transportation Security Administration, mm -hmm. federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies, as well as counterterrorism units right. across the nation. Right. Uh, we also partner with the, uh, with our, we collaborate with our partners overseas as well. Okay. And, and tell me, you are, um, wherever the rail is, Amtrak police are? That's correct, sir, yes. So, uh, how big do you know is your department? Currently, we're roughly about 500, 500 strong. Okay. So, uh, Sergeant, tell me what is the PASS program? PASS stands for Partners for Amtrak, Amtrak Safety and Security Program. Mm -hmm. And basically what that is, it's a neighborhood watch style program where passengers, rail fans, rail enthusiasts, right. uh, people that live adjacent to the right of way, right. or if the railroad runs through the neighborhood, what they can do is they can actually call our 1-800 uh, number mm -hmm. at 1-800-331-008 mm -hmm. if they see anything that appears to be suspicious out of the ordinary. Right. Uh, now, what would you vehicles. call suspicious or out of the ordinary? Well, anything uh, anything that wouldn't necessarily be with that normal baseline right. of activity. And that could be people loitering around the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. uh, abandoned vehicles. Right. Uh, anything that uh, that appears out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how does someone sign up for this program again? Well, basically what they can do is they can go to amtrak.pass.com, mm -hmm. fill out the registration form, You'll need your name and also your email address. Right. And from there, uh, a membership card will be sent via email mm -hmm. to you. Is there a cost for this? No, sir. Is no. there any other type of training they need to have for, for this program? Or? No, sir. The only thing that they need to do is just be vigil vigilant mm -hmm. and be aware of what's going on in, in their communities and adjacent to the railroad. Now, now, who? Can anybody just sign up for this? Is there an age limit or anything like that? Or? Well, yes, sir. Uh, you have to be 18 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. And if someone is a, a part of the PASS program, um, what exactly, uh, again, should they be looking for? Once again, they should be looking for anything suspicious. Any trespassers, mm -hmm. suspicious or unattended vehicles, people jotting down notes, mm -hmm. videoing, mm -hmm. uh, anything that they normally would not see in the course of their daily duties or mm -hmm. daily activities. Now, are, are this all, what about people who commute back and forth from, uh, from Washington or Philly or whatever by train? Should they be looking out for these things also? Absolutely, sir. Uh, one of the things that they can do, if they're on the train and they see unattended luggage, mm -hmm. uh, anything that appears to be, uh, to be out of the ordinary, if they see somebody acting in a suspicious manner, um, it could be sweating, uh, once again, jotting down notes, taking information, mm -hmm. uh, you know, especially if things like using a GPS on the train right. uh, would stand out. Right. Uh, people that live adjacent to the railroad tracks, you know, if they see unattended vehicles, mm -hmm. Uh, trespassers, uh, you know, open or damaged gates, mm -hmm. you know, uh, anything that they normally don't see out there. Okay. Now you mentioned something there about uh, about luggage and things like that. Uh, I, I guess it's almost the same as if someone boarding an airplane having to go through security. Um, you know, I know you don't have to go through the security checkpoints like you do at the uh, airport when you're flying, but you should be looking out for someone who leaves a baggage or if someone asks you to carry a baggage bag or something like that onto the train for them. Absolutely, sir. And that's definitely one thing that you don't want to do. You never want to watch somebody's, somebody else's bag. Mm -hmm. uh, anything, anytime you see an unattended bag, you want to notify your nearest Amtrak police officer mm -hmm. or, or nearest Amtrak employee. Mm -hmm. um, are, are, you, are you all very visible at the uh, train stations and the stops? Yes, sir, we are. Now, some of our stations, we have over 500 stations. Some mm -hmm. of these stations are unmanned. So what they can do is they can call 1-800-331-008, mm -hmm. or they can dial 911 for mm -hmm. assistance. Now, do, do you all have dogs out there sniffing for things also? Yes, sir. We have a very comprehensive, uh, very great canine program. Mm -hmm. uh, the canine officers, they do ride the trains. Uh, they are visible in the stations okay. uh, and actively working. Okay. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about what the benefits of the past program are. Okay? Sir. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. There's something about a train that's magic. 
steel wheel against the steel rail, it links our country together. A train is kind of iconic. You know, it's something that's been around since the 1800s. There is a bind between the people of this country and the railroad. The train is a rolling neighborhood, and it's a rolling community. People move in, people move out, people step on the train, people step off. And it's a way of people all going the same place, or at least the same direction, together. I got interested in railroads when I was four years old. As far as I can remember, uh, my parents uh, took me places on the New Haven Railroad. I started taking pictures when I was 14 years old and persuaded my parents to buy me a camera. And uh, from then on, I started taking pictures of trains and I'm still doing it today, a few years later. A lot of us grew up with the little engine that could, Others have grown up with Thomas the Tank Engine. Others have grown up with Lionel trains and HO trains and model trains. There's something about this country that's really tied into the train network. And we're looking at people who want to help us protect that network. There's thousands and thousands of miles of railroad rights of way in this country. Much of the right of way is open and uh, it could be vulnerable to trespassing to criminal activities or even terrorist activities. Unfortunately, events overseas have shown us that terrorists have interest in targeting that means of transportation, and even here in the U.S. How terrorist plots have been disrupted is because of actions of people, a police officer, a passenger, an employee, seeing something of concern and acting on it. On a given train, there are maybe three, four, five employees in a large part of the country. That train's carrying hundreds of people, hundreds of sets of eyes to keep an eye on things. We're counting on our passengers to look out for each other, look out for themselves, and look out for the railroad. We're looking for people to report those activities outside the norm that cause them concern. If there's vandalism being committed, if there's something wrong with the train, if there's trespassers climbing onto the tracks when they shouldn't be there, or if people are out there uh, who look like they're, they're up to no good, let's put it that way. If you see anything out of the ordinary, let us know. A clothing description if it's a person or describing a, uh, an object on the ground. If you see something, say something. Pass.amtrak.com is the place to go to sign up to be part of this program. Amtrak has provided a very good description of the program on its public website. Helps people understand what it is specifically the railroad is interested in. To report things like trespassers, uh, misplaced packages, misplaced vehicles, other things that cause concern. We all can 
play a very effective role in ensuring that we are attentive and reporting concerns and help stop potentially bad things from happening. The more eyes, the more feet on the ground, the more people looking, the better off we are in finding something before something goes wrong. This program will create, uh, you know, thousands, literally thousands of eyes and ears watching out for what goes on on the railroad, and I think that's very beneficial. Riding on a train is very safe, uh, and it's my job to make it even safer, and that's why we need the help of the public, our rail fans, and even our Amtrak employees. Everybody has a hand in making the railroad safe. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. With me is Sergeant Shakar of the Amtrak Police Department. So, so, Sergeant, when we left, we were talking about the PASS program. What are the real benefits of a program like this? Well, sir, uh, during some of the passenger focus groups, uh, in talking with the passengers, we found out that the train passengers, the community, it, it's basically a, a community. Mm -hmm. uh, we found out that they really wanted to help us out, right. uh, that they really wanted to get involved. Uh, but at the time, uh, this was prior to April of 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, there was no program in place okay. uh, for them to, to help us out and assist. So they came up with the PASS program, and basically what this allows is, is it allows for a train rider, or passenger, uh, right. patron, employee, all right, to call the 1-800 number and report suspicious activity. Okay. Um, now, the benefits to, uh, to this is you're actually, at the end of the day, I think that all of us just want to go home safely. Right. And this enables all of us to do this. Right. Um, this program uh, offers the customers, you know, the, the passengers, uh, a better sense of, and a way of, uh, you know, getting involved mm -hmm. and helping us protect the railroads. And, and, and how many people do you, would you say have, uh, have signed up for this program? At this time, we're roughly 2,500, and the number is steadily rising. And, and what kind of um, response are you getting from people who are reporting? Are they really being uh, vigilant and reporting activity? Well, at this time, we really don't track that, but mm -hmm. we have had quite a few people call in and say that they are a member of the PASS program. Mm -hmm. um, and typically what they'll do is they'll leave their name and, and contact information, and that's actually very beneficial to us uh, okay. when we do to get a call in reference to uh, the program or something that's mm -hmm. unusual. Now, how do you encourage people to get involved in the PASS program? Do you have... Uh, signs up or do you talk to passengers when they're out or do you do you notify people who live in the uh, area where the rails are how do you how do you get the information out uh, or tell people about the pass program well that's that's where we have you sam okay all right uh, okay we we do have billboards okay uh we do have a website it's amtrak pass mm -hmm. or pass.amtrak.com right uh more information on that website we also have security tips and other mm -hmm. information okay uh, we also have the amtrak police website okay uh if you go to your uh, a computer search engine and right. type in Amtrak Police, our right. website will come up. Okay, all right. And how long have you been with the Amtrak Police? I've been with the Amtrak Police Department for a little bit over four years now. Okay, and what were you doing prior to that? I was in the military. Okay, so you've been serving our country for for a while now. Yes, sir. Uh, now, tell me, if someone is uh, is watching this show, and, uh, and, and I'm sure they'll be impressed with what they see um, and hear from you, uh, and they decide they want to be an Amtrak Police Officer, what would they do? Well, what they could do is they could go on to our, our website, mm -hmm. AmtrakPolice.com or Police.Amtrak.com. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it will have a list of uh, the requirements mm -hmm. uh, to be an Amtrak police officer, mm -hmm. some of the uh, opportunities okay. and training that you would, you would go through. Are you, are you hiring former law enforcement people who have retired at an early age and come on? Or, Absolutely, know? sir. Okay. And uh, is there like a program for, um, a lot of times we'd like to uh, give program, uh, information to young people in school, in high school or college. Uh, in a career. Do you have recruiting programs or would there be information for them also? Yes, also on the website, sir. Okay. Well, uh, Sarge, I want to thank you for, uh, for coming on. I think a lot of times people don't realize just how vigilant when they're riding uh, the rails and they're just being comfortable and, and, and riding along. Sarge, thank you for coming on the show today and uh, good luck to you. All right. Thank you, sir.